because Parsons Teen Vogue's course is a lot like Project Runway in that you don't need to know how to sew, you could glue it, you could paste it, you could tape it, you can get a few people to hold it together on your model. Um, and I think that's good because, you know, some people are taking it not to become a designer. Some people wanted the marketing aspect, the media aspect. So I think you can find enough sewing videos online. But since we were constructing bags and blouses and all of these things, I thought I would give you guys a video on some basics of sewing. So this is my brother's sewing machine. It is a CS6000i. Now they do have Project Runway versions of this. Speaking of Project Runway, you're going to see your stitch selection buttons here. So for instance, right now it's on zero, zero. If we were to move this one up, now it's on one. So this machine can be very temperamental. So make sure that you're paying attention to your thread tension. If this goes up too much or down too much, you will notice that inside of the bobbin casing, uh, inside of the machine, you will be getting a lot of thread all bundled up. So, or it can be, um, bunching to the back of your fabric. So make sure that if you are noticing that, that you are paying attention to your thread tension as well as the stitch selection. Now these two to the right are going to be the thread length, the stitch length, and stitch width selections. So you will toggle these up or down depending on how long you want each stitch to be and how wide you want those stitches to be. For example, in a zigzag stitch or something like that. Now I will go into the different types of stitch styles. We are going to construct a pillow out of the fabric that I created for the course. And this is the fabric that I painted for the Your Sample assignment. So it is a hand-painted skull done in a metallic screen printing ink. And I did this because these types of pillows, or the pillow we're going to be making, run for up to $90. So I was like, hell no, we're going to DIY yes, yes. DIY till we die. So I am going to be showing you a straight stitch and a zigzag stitch to act as a serge type of a stitch to protect it from fraying if you don't have a serger. We are going to start by placing the right sides of the fabric. That doesn't mean left or right, but rather the sheen, shiny side is the right side. The matte side is the reverse side of the fabric. So we're going to start by placing both of the shiny sides together because we want that to be the outside of the pillow and we are going to be sewing it inside out so that we're creating some neat seams. I will begin by pinning this together and then we will begin sewing around the perimeter. You'll notice I pin perpendicular to the direction of the sewing. It makes it easier to pull the pins out as you're going through the machine. I am also going to make sure to mark stopping points so that I do not fully sew the bottom as we'll have to stuff the pillow and leave some room to stuff and then hand close the bottom of the pillow. But this is just to give you an idea of lay your fabric on a flat surface, pin, and make sure that you are leaving room. Some Taylor's chalk, I will make sure to note for myself that I shall stop here. You know, it doesn't have to be specific, but just noting that I do not want to sew that closed. And when you actually begin to sew, you could forget this. So it is helpful to mark it out. To thread the machine, make sure that you follow the instructions for your machine. They will typically have an instruction for how to thread the bobbin and also how to thread the machine. So I will be starting from one of the endpoints opposite where I intend to end. So we're going to start down here. I typically use a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance so we will line up the end of the fabric there and we will begin doing a straight stitch. Now this is a little awkward. <laughs> trying to film this so bear with me. You're going to want to do a back stitch to ensure that it does not run and then you can speed up your 
machine here. And as you go along, remove your pins. Once I meet where I intend to turn the fabric, I will lift the presser foot, turn it, this is called pivoting, and then we will continue to sew a straight seam with our 5 8 seam allowance. Now here I have more fabric overlaid. This is the salvage, so I want to go over the salvage. Some people sew right over the pins. I went ahead and flipped it inside out just to make sure I was satisfied with the shape before doing the zigzag stitch over the edge. And also I did not grade the corners. You can make the corner sharper by trimming the excess on the inside. So to grade the corners and make them lie nice and sharp, you will just cut off any excess from the edge. Then go ahead and grade the seams as well if you are doing a garment that is going to have that show. Since this is a pillow, it isn't really necessary. Uh, I will show you how to do the zigzag. You can see that our corners look much, much crisper and nicer now that we have graded them. Go ahead and put our machine on a zigzag stitch, which is number four. Again, you can control the width here and the stitch length here using these two adjusters. Now we're going to go over the edge. If you're using a fabric that you feel can fray or unravel, then this will work in a solution similar to a serger. So if you don't have or can't afford a serger, you can just do a zigzag stitch over the edge like this. And that is hard to see, but it has gone over the edge and will act like a serger to protect it from fraying. Again, I should have used a different color thread, but you can zigzag over the edge to stop it from fraying. This pillow from Target, I felt like it gave more stuffing than the polyester stuffing you could buy in the craft department. So I went ahead and got this since it was cheaper. This is what a surged edge will look like. We tried to create that effect with the zigzag stitch. So this will give you an understanding of what we were doing there. I cut the pillow open so we could stuff our new pillow with that filling. The final step is to hand sew the pillow closed. I am using a curved needle and to knot the end, you will just loop it around your finger, pull the thread through that loop, cut off any excess, which isn't really necessary if it's on the inside. And then we are going to hand stitch it closed, being sure to note where the original seam was, and then placing the needle inside of that seam allowance, or inside where that fold would be created. And I love curved needles because they do give you a different kind of leverage than a straight needle, but if you're used to a straight needle or prefer a straight needle, go ahead and use one. Now when you're hand stitching, I find it helpful to pull the seam so that you're not bunching because you will create a rippling effect if you do not. 
and then also you'll want to knot it every few threads or every few stitches or so and to do that you will just pull through the loop that you are creating so from that last stitch I will take that loop put my needle through it and then just pull and that will knot your stitch and prevent it from unraveling beyond that point. Also, it will help with the rippling that I mentioned before since it will prevent the threads from tightening beyond that point. The seam, I just have this a little bit to go. You're going to go side to side and place the needle through the fabric remaining inside that 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. This is so that you do not see the threads or the stitches on the outside of the fabric. Go from one side to the other and remember to knot every few stitches as you go along. Okay, so I just finished closing it up and there is our pillow. And there is the finished product. I hope you liked this project. Please rate, comment, share, subscribe, and visit my fashion and beauty blog at youwannawhat.com. The link will be posted below. Isn't it to die for?